This is Delhi. Please stand by for the next broadcast. This is All India Radio. Varanasi is an accumulation of all amalgamations. It's the city where faith transcends everything and everyone. Today, in the national program of features in line with Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, we bring you a feature titled Relieving the Stories of the Freedom Struggle in Banaras, showcasing how the city of Banaras was witness to some interesting episodes in the history of Indian freedom struggle besides it being an ancient capital of myriad myths and mystics. Shankhendwa Bhamati Vasundaratanum Shardula Charmambaram Kala Vyala Karala Bhushanadharam Ganga Shashanka Priyam Kashi Shankali Kalma Shaudha Shamanam Kalyana Kalpadrumam Now Midyam Girijapatim Gunanidhim Kandar Paham Shankaram Sitting on the banks of the river Ganga, enjoying the silhouettes that the majestic landscape offers in all their glory, the magic of the ancient city of Varanasi holds us firmly in its grip. As the evening arti rings out and the dance of the huge brass lamps that the priests hold as they move in tandem with the devotional music plays out, we stand mesmerized, taking in the magical cries of Har Har Gange that the devotees invoke the river with. As the reflection on the waters seems to wear a cloak of twinkling diyas, it is not difficult to understand why the city that is often referred to as the abode of Lord Shiva enthralls everyone with its pure and pristine spiritual air. Old timers of Varanasi take pride in telling you that while many from across the world come here in search of moksha and enjoy its myriad flavors, from textiles to food, there's yet another chapter that needs to be looked at with greater pride. And this is the city's association with India's freedom struggle. In fact, years before the rumblings of the 1857 mutiny first shook the foundations of the British rule in India, Raja Chait Singh, who came to the throne of Banaras in the year 1776, let the East India Company know that he would not become a meek pawn in their hands. It's a well-known fact of history that Warren Hastings, the governor of the East India Company, would appoint small-time rulers whom they could manipulate as per their will. Chait Singh, who had ascended the royal seat, with the help of the British, however, made it clear to them that he had a mind of his own. Needless to say, when he refused to comply with Hastings' demand for both money and a strong troop of men to fight on their behalf, they invaded his fort in Varanasi. Professor Rakesh Pandey, a historian with specialization in heritage management and who has been teaching at the Banaras Hindu University for the past 38 years, talks about the role that Raja Chait Singh played in fending off the British even though his fort was besieged and he was snatched off his title. Raja Chait Singh of Varanasi is a legendary figure. His uh, father, Maharaja Balwan Singh, was the first Jamindar of Kashi Jamindari, which came into existence in 1748. And he got that Jamindari from the Muslim rulers 
who were having their seat of power in Pajabad. Balwan Singh was of Bhumihar caste. Balwan Singh remained in power from 1748 to 1772. He married two women, one of his own caste and another of Rajput or Chhatri caste. So from the Bhumihar wife, no son he got, only a daughter he got. And then from the Rajput wife, he got a son called Chet Singh. Because Chet Singh was not acceptable to the dominant Bhumihars. Anyhow, he managed to have the Jamindari of Banaras. And the Governor General, Warren Hastings, agreed to grant the Jamindari of Varanasi to Chet Singh, and he succeeded his father. And at that time, the Jamindari of Varanasi cost the Jamindar rupees 5 lakhs per year. And the Jamindar purchased a title of Raja. But at that time, there was a dispute in the family of Chet Singh. The relatives are invited for a, something, a ritual food. So the Bhumihars, they boycotted that meeting and that irked him. And he attacked some of the Bhumihars who were very much close to Warren Hastings. And Warren Hastings was convinced. And then he imposed more demand for the continuance of Jamindari with Chet Singh. Almost 5 lakhs more, which Chet Singh did not want to give. So in order to extort that money, Warren Hastings from Calcutta came to Varanasi and he summoned Chet Singh. That was something like a point of dispute. Raja Chet Singh attacked Warren Hastings. And anyhow, Warren Hastings had to run away from Varanasi, took shelter in Chunar. Popular folklore in the city still talks about the way the rebellious forces of Benares repelled Warren Hastings and he was forced to flee to the Chunar fort on an elephant. Ghode par hauda, hati par jeen, kashi se bhaga, Warren Hastings, is what they say with glee. Starting with the Raja Chait Singh Ghat that witnessed one of the first war cries against the British rule in the late 18th century, Varanasi houses close to 90 official ghats. It was in the year 1828, close to the picturesque Asi Ghat in Varanasi, that a little girl was born who has the distinct honour of being one of the stellar leaders of India's first war of independence against the British. Named Mani Karnika Tambe, this little girl rose to become immortal as Rani Lakshmi Bai of Chhansi. Although she was married into the royal family of Jhansi in 1844, young Manikarnika is believed to have been far ahead of her time. Not confined with the traditional roles expected from girls her age, she learned to read and write and was also adept at shooting, horsemanship, fencing and even the Malakamba sport. Kanpur ke nana ki muhboli behen chabi di thi. लक्ष्मी बाई नाम पिता की वो संतान अकेली थी नाना के संग पढ़ती थी वो नाना के संग खेली थी बरछी ढाल कृपाण कटारी उसकी यही सहेली थी वीर शिवाजी की गाथाएं उसको याद जुबानी थी खूब लड़ी मर्दानी वह तो झांसी वाली रानी थी बट ऑफ कोर्स मणिकर्णिका वाज नॉट द ओनली वन वाराणसी वाज होम टू मेनी मराठास हु सेट अप देयर होम हियर एंड हेल्प्ड इंडिया on her journey towards freedom. A fiery race that looked up to the great Maratha warrior Shivaji Maharaj, they were ready to fight the British at any cost. In 1893, when the British banned political assemblies, their Ganesh Chaturthi festival was revived and given a new avatar by the Indian nationalist leader Bal Gangadhar Tilak. At his call, the celebration that was mainly confined to homes became a community affair to help motivate people to become part of the fast-spreading struggle for freedom. Selish Tripathi, who has done his PhD in archaeology and is a visiting professor at BHU, has this to add. A lot of Marathis started living in Varanasi. Marathas repaired all the ghats and temples of Varanasi. They have got a lot of influence. So when they come to Varanasi to stay or to leave, they come with all their tradition, culture and everything. Ganesh Chaturthi always being there. That was a festival of the Hindus that was celebrated all the time. But when Bal Gangadhar Tilak took it 
as a symbol of nationalism then it become so popular in maharashtra and the same way wherever marathis went they carry that ganesh chaturthi festival with them not only ganesh chaturthi but all other festivals of hindus that become the symbol of nationalism The city proudly speaks of its association with Annie Besant, the British educationist and philanthropist. A supporter of both Irish and Indian self-rule, Besant came to India in 1893 and soon became one of the most iconic exponents of the Indian freedom movement. She also went on to become the first woman president of the Indian National Congress in 1917. As an educationist, one of Besant's major contributions was the establishment of the Central Hindu College in 1898 in Varanasi. What she stressed upon was an institution where Indian students could be educated on the values of Hindu civilization and develop a sense of pride in being Indian. Although in the year 1910 Her dream of setting up a university did not materialize. A year later, the Central Hindu College, in collaboration with the great freedom fighter Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya and other educationists, became the nucleus for the Banaras Hindu University that was set up in the year 1916. Salil Mishra, professor of history at the Ambedkar University, Delhi, has this to say. it was in the 20th century that very important alternatives developed to this western european imagination of higher education of universities and banaras again played an important role in both of them first of course was the banaras hindu university imagination in which there was probably no great breakthrough at the level of curriculum from what was to be taught but the idea was that these should be independent institutions free from the patronage control of the government and madan mohan malviya played a great role in creating such an institution so an institution which would be modern which would compete with the government uh, universities but at the level of curriculum at the level of what is to be taught modern science technology it would not lag behind but the alternative imagination where a kind of an indigenous kind of an imagination was to be provided that these institutions should also make a breakthrough at the level of what is to be taught what kind of knowledge how our knowledge is to be constructed what is the role of tradition what is the role of local knowledge one came through the banaras hindu university which was set up by malviya and the second kind of institutions were developed during the course of the non cooperation movement at gandhi's initiative so vishwa bharti uh, shanti niketan uh, kashi vidyapeet gujarat vidyapeet and many other uh, such institutions so banaras in a way also became the headquarters for alternative imaginations indeed varanasi was soon becoming a center for quality education in 1921 The city saw Babu Shiv Prasad Gupta, a philanthropist and a visionary, and Dr. Bhagwan Das, a theosophist, establish the Kashi Vidyapeet. Inaugurated by Mahatma Gandhi, this institution became the meeting place of many leaders when the non-cooperation movement was fast gaining momentum in the eastern United Provinces. Originally named Kashi Vidyapeet, the university was renamed Mahatma Gandhi Kashi Vidyapeet. in 1995 let's hear what professor anand tyagi the vice chancellor of the mahatma gandhi kashi vidyapeet has to say about it city of varanasi was basically a place where in the seeds of the freedom fighter started back in 1781 and then 1835 and so on the history of uh, uh, mahatma gandhi kashi vidyapeet goes back to the freedom struggle days gandhi ji realized we should have a system wherein we don't have any intervention from the government because we were getting government grants at uh, kashi hindu vishwavidyalaya 
So that was putting some sort of hurdle that our youths were not able to take part freely in the freedom fight. And this trio of Mahatma Gandhi ji, Shri Prasad Gupta ji and Mandan Mohan Malviya ji started that thing. And Mahatma Gandhi ji himself laid the foundation stone of Kashi Vidya Peet on 10th February 1921. Some of the other alumni from the university, besides Sachandra Shekhar Rajat ji, we are having Lal Bahadur Shastri ji. We have Ram Krishna Hegde ji, Bhola Pashman Shastri ji, Manmatnath Gupta ji, Rajaram Shastri ji, Acharya Munshi Premchand ji, Acharya Narendra ji. They all of them they were being associated with the university, and they hold a number of posts in our university. Like Munshi Premchand ji was in in the department. Similarly, the other well-known freedom fighter and the social reformer Bhagwan Das ji was our first vice chancellor. Doctor Bhagwan Das ji was a historian. He was a person from Sanskrit. Presently, we have celebrated this year our hundred and first year. So, whatever legacy Mahatma Gandhi ji gave to us of serving the society that we are still doing. It is interesting that this university became a symbol of Indian self-reliance, as it was not governed by the British Indian government, but by the leaders of the freedom movement. This is what attracted many young leaders like Bhagat Singh and Chandrasekhar Azad here. So uh, Sarupalli Radha Krishnan was connected to Varanasi. He lived here for a long time. Then all these, if you are talking about the freedom struggle, particularly starting from Mahatma Gandhi to Bhagat Singh, Chandrasekhar Azad, Khudi Rambos, Subhash Chandra Bose, all these people have left their traces in Varanasi. That was Selesh Tripathi talking about the Young Freedom Fighters Association with Varanasi. It was around this time that Varanasi became the center for the Khadi Boli, stressing on how the use of this language helped the political movement gain momentum. Let's hear what Professor Salil Mishra has to say about this. In the second half of the 19th century, Varanasi was the headquarters of a very important Hindi movement. It was a, both a political movement; it was also a literary and social movement. It was a struggle for a claim for a certain patronage from the government for Hindi. So it started from 1860s. and it went on through the decades of the 19th century there was some kind of a recognition by government in 1900 so it can be said that this uh, hindi movement was successful uh, at the beginning of the 20th century now the thing is that the movement was really for a kind of a khadi boli hindi which we are used to which has now become a kind of pan north indian and the fact that it could have started in uh, banaras was interesting because banaras is not the place uh, for khadi boli hindi it's an interesting city which is at the meeting points of avdhi and bhojpuri in a way the avdhi speaking zone ends with banaras and the bhojpuri speaking zone begins from banaras so varanasi is a kind of a confluence of these two very rich literary traditions avdhi and bhojpuri and yet the movement that started in banaras was actually for khadi boli hindi it was neither for bhojpuri nor for avdhi and it was the headquarters of what may be called a khadi boli andolan or khadi boli uh, movement hailing from a wealthy zamindar family babu shiv prasad gupta about whom we have spoken earlier also launched a hindi newspaper called aaj that incidentally is printed even today selish tripathi gives us the details about what made the paper tick and the role it played in documenting and reporting on what was happening around the country babu shiv prasad gupta one of the closest friend of mahatma gandhi and one of the very famous freedom struggler he founded that aaj newspaper at that time it was very difficult for any uh, freedom fighter to publish a newspaper but he was a you know rich man with all his influences and money he created this aaj newspaper which is still running means 130 year professor salil mishra talks about how the paper brought the people closer to the freedom struggle it was the most important nationalist paper in hindi language by far there the no absolutely no doubt about it it competed with the best you see the hindi journalism initially had started in calcutta in the 19th century calcutta was the headquarters but at the end of the 19th century uh, banaras ilahabad to some extent patna also these became the centers and then aaj 
started from banaras and i think aaj uh, the hindi newspapers had some kind of a disadvantage vis-a-vis english journalism the english journalism was equipped with better technology through a uh, wireless they would uh, get news much earlier etc etc but i think aaj really stands out because it competed with the best it provided a uh, news excellent news um, i have looked at some of the files of aaj politically it was very alive it practiced indian nationalism and it played a very important role again in taking the ideas of indian nationalism in the year 1936 the skyline of varanasi offered something unique the bharat mata mandir that could well be called the only one of its kind in the world Located in the campus of the Mahatma Gandhi Kashi Vidyapeet, this Bharat Mata Mandir is far from what you would expect in a temple. No, there are no statues of gods and goddesses, but a huge map of undivided India carved in marble. It depicts the mountains, plains and oceans up to scale. Professor Rakesh Pandey Bharat Mata Mandir came into existence around 1920 when non cooperation movement was launched by mahatma gandhi in 1920 then uh, in the premises of the university there is a place here marked as bharat mata mandir that was something like a time when veneration for bharat mata even invocation of bharat mata or as a word bharat mata was newly coming so invoking and perpetuating and reinforcing and strengthening that very idea was required for making people inspired by the idea of bharat mata so in order to make a joint front of the indian people of diverse cultures the idea of bharat mata came into existence and this very temple of bharat mata where on the ground the topography of india has been done if you see the figure the himalayas and the seas so everything is shown there all the rivers it is a very powerful symbol of the freedom movement which has center in varans the weavers of banaras whose lineage goes back several centuries and who came to be greatly patronized by the mughal and later kings started seeing bad days during the british period as is a well known fact it was the british who bit by bit sounded the death knell for them unhappy and disillusioned with what was happening many of the artisans joined the freedom struggle in their own small yet significant way smriti murarka winner of the nari shakti award and who has been working with the weavers of banaras for the past 25 years talks about these weavers involvement in the freedom struggle the craftsmen although they are artists but they led a very day to day life like they earned their living on a day to day basis so they could not become part of the mainstream freedom movement in that sense as we know so many others who put their uh, blood and might into the freedom movement but they did their own thing by weaving in like i have to at this point point out that banaras is quite adept at making figurative weaves even back then so they would be uh, bharat mata with some kind of a flag it was not the flag we use today but whatever was the engineered flag at the time they would write jai bharat on the palla they would write uh, vande mataram on the borders they would make let's say the ashokan pillar that symbol and this was their way of spreading the message and making the wearer feel more patriotic when they donned these crafts so it was their expression of supporting the weaving independence movement without having to forego their basic income that they got out of doing this so i think they had their own journey they had their own bit that they did in uh, marking that time in history forever The myriad aspects of Benares have been a muse for writers and artists not just during the freedom struggle but also in the contemporary era. 
we are talking about greats such as M.F. Hussain, Ram Kumar and Manu Parikh. Every time Parikh goes to this ancient city, he comes back with experiences each more dramatic and beautiful than the other. And he continues to be fascinated not just with the magic of the lights reflecting on the flowing waters of the Ganges, sounds of bells coming from temples as they stand silhouetted against the dark red and orange sky, people praying on the banks, but also its history. And the lessons in life and philosophy that the city unfolds at every step. Let's hear what the Padma Shri awardee has to say. Sentra when Ram Kumar went there in the beginning, but my interest was there to create a typical Banaras. They say Banaras is a city of light, but I realized there is a two kinds of light. One is man-made, one is God-made. The colors of sky and then reflection on water, that is a God-made. And the Sringar of Mandir, tone, colors, cloths, even lighting, that was a man-made. I learned the beauty of a faith in Banaras. I will give you one interesting example. I was standing at the Sashwami Ghat and young married people was coming for a Ganga Pujan. So you see their couple's face full of fantasy, full of happiness with the flowers and different kind of a colorful clothes. And then just I started walking and within a five minutes there was a Manikarnika guard. So all vertical figure was on a horizontal with the same kind of a color, same kind of a flower. So you can feel life and death together. That was a very magical thing. Among the many feathers that Varanasi adorns in its cap has been Ustad Bismillah Khan. Manu Parikh recalls the moment when this great exponent of the Shehnai was invited by a humanitarian organization to stay in the U.S. And this is what, as Parikh tells us, the Ustad had to say. Bismillah Khan sahab. So I think hmm. some Rockefeller people came and offered him to come to America. So he said, we can So Rockefeller people said, So that is a Banaras. Indeed, many visitors say they are able to hear the waters of the Ganga whisper tales of valour and sacrifice of all those who fought for the freedom of their country and continue to make Varanasi proud. In the national program, you just heard a feature titled Reliving Stories of the Freedom Struggle in Banaras. Script and narration by Purnima Sharma. It was produced by Meenakshi Mund with assistance and production from Shamoita Das, a presentation of the Central English Features Unit. This broadcast came to you from the Delhi station of All India Radio.